Testing, one, two, hello, hello. How's that for the audio? Is that better? Cool, thanks. Alrighty. Music is quiet or the audio, the spoken, my microphone. OBS is kind of a pain in the butt. So, microphone audio is maxed. Let me double check the... Sometimes Windows has silly microphone issues. Uh, so OBS is turned up. Okay, OBS can go a little higher. Hopefully that will help a little bit. Got mixtures all over the place here. <laughs> louder then because I don't know if I can get the mic any louder at this point it's a stupid headset mic okay let me go to so I got a couple water samples tonight I've been raining like crazy one is a gutter sample from a flowing gutter with some stuff in it another one is a um, standing water like a bird bath that had some nice color to it so hopefully it's got some color from some good critters and not just dirt or rusty bits or whatever because there might be some metallic particles in it so let's do a quick scan of this slide just to see if there's anything here I'm also getting debris lots of debris It's fun to see the, uh, I put too much water on the slide. So you see the trailing edge of the water under the cover slip. It has different, uh, it's not uniform based on the uh, 
the cohesion with the glass, the surface tension of the water. It's funny how it's, it's uh, asymmetrically drying up a little bit as it pulls into the cover slip. Some fun physics there. And I can actually see. Uh, the camera doesn't pick it up as well as my eye does. You can see some rippling effect in the water as it's pinching and some of the crystals are forming there. There was some streaming earlier as the uh, water was kind of settling out. Particles were dancing around. Ooh, there's a big spill over here. That's crazy. Here you can see the artifacts you get in a, pond, a puddle on the ground as it dries up. Or the concentrated solutes get kind of a darker in this case, lighter because I'm dark field, but usually a darker edge uh, compared to the rest of the water. There's a concentration of solutes in the water. Little crystals forming there. I'll be able to adjust that light a little bit. It's a little bright on that. The uh, music stream I'm using is similar to the black hole. Um, this one's called, uh, it's a similar engine. This particular configuration is called Twin Black Lodges. So if you guys like uh, Twin Peaks, I'm sure it's a reference to Twin Peaks. Although it's not nearly as dark as Twin Peaks music. So, so yeah, I'm not seeing anything kind of zipping around on this guy. That's a cool... Uh, air bubbles and little bits of colorful dead plant material and stuff. Nice little air bubbles there. Space art. So let me try one more slide. This, uh, this track has kind of a Vangelis quality to it. All right, let's see. It's actually not a track, it's a mixed multi-environment thingy. There's a mixer in front of me here that I can keep tweaking the elements, which I will do so it doesn't get too monotonous. Let's try boosting a couple here. There you go. That's a little bit different. Let's get some more water. This is the uh, gutter water again, just in case it had anything decent in it. Since it's pretty fresh rainwater, it was flowing a bunch, so there may not be much hanging out in here except for the, see the particles dancing around, but that's about it. Some more kind of space art stuff there. Some particles that you can see the terminator of the light effect and uh, like you get on the moon. And there's a uh, little particles dancing there. There's one going around the corner. Look at that. Right around the corner. Almost looks like some of the uh, interstellar effects with the uh, the edge of the uh, event horizon. So, 
That's kind of fun, but I'm looking for some live stuff. So let me move on. of various particles. There's some interesting reddish mass there. Nothing attacking it like the last stream I did. Already getting crystals forming around the edges. Oh, nice little air bubbles there. More, uh, album art cover kind of stuff. There's a blob of something. Let's go ahead and just see what the hell that is. What the hell? Of stuff. Ooh, another red thing. This could be plant material, it could be some kind of food product, man made food product. It's really hard to tell. That's kind of fun about doing these random sample things and uh, never know exactly what I'm going to find. And you get some interesting looking things that still remain a mystery, even after examining them for a while. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, uh, I started doing the live streams not because it's fun and uh, not just ex exploratory and random and weird and stuff but also because I'm too lazy to do long form videos um, <laughs> these days so if you look at my channel um, the first several videos I put up were curated videos that took quite a while to put together even though they're kind of short um, and I really do have lots of other footage I shot on cameras before I even did live streams and I still have to go back and revisit plus yeah I can pull choice moments out of these live streams and make a collage of stuff, especially the, uh, I had the whole series of cell death videos that were kind of fascinating, showing how the thing was, you know, cruising around all happy, spinning, sitting there, all of a sudden it kind of sits there for a while, chills out for a couple seconds, and then starts to distend and then poof, pops. And, uh, and really no obvious reason for some of those because the temperature hadn't changed much, the salinity hasn't changed because it's the same water. Um, I doubt the thing suddenly got old age from just being on the slide for a little bit. So I really don't know why some of them kept dying on some of these streams. But it's pretty fascinating to catch that because all the years I've looked at stuff under the scope, I don't really catch that very often. And lately I caught a bunch of them. So it's kind of fun. Even though it's a bit morbid, but it is life. Life and death are all intertwined. So it is what it is. So let me check on a couple more passes through this guy. Looks like it's pretty dead. I'm hoping that uh, bird bath thing had some goodies in it. Especially if some birds were using it. Because they carry stuff on their feet and feathers everywhere. Let's try that one next. This is pretty dead. Let's do some bird stuff. Bird bath. Also, I have a little. Well, it's not really a surprise, but it's something I was, was munching on some chocolate almonds earlier. 
and I wanted to look at the uh, scrapings from a milk chocolate almond versus a dark chocolate almond, as well as a piece of the toasted almond inside on the scope to see what that looks like. So if you're um, looking forward to something other than this water sample, I'm going to do that just a little bit. So I want to try these real quick while I have them, since these are perishable. Let's see what we can find. This one had some color to it, so it might have some good bits in it. Oops. Okay, let's see what we can find on this guy. Seen particle motion. Uh, I spilled water on top of the slide too, I think. But look at that. That's interesting. A little cluster of. Oh, there's a bunch of clusters of cells in here. Look at that. Wow. They're red cells. What the hell is that? That's cool. And they are motile. I think, unless that one's just caught in the stream. Yeah, looks like it's caught in the stream. Looks like it has a membrane around it. There's some little swimmers in there too. Yeah, they are free swimming. Look at that. That one's tumbling. Let me go to the tumbling guy here. is all messed up. Whoa. It's like a flume. <laughs> that is really bizarre. So yeah, I'm getting some uh, green, red, orange, and yellowy cells, so they are changing color based on something. There's some little flagellates swimming around some of the material here. going a little closer change this lighting a bit yeah it's looking pretty dark here I'll crank that light up some more Well, that's what was giving color to the water. A lot of these little spe Whoa, there's one swimming by. Whoa. That's cool. See, it's got a, a membrane around it. That is wild. It's like a cell with an extra membrane around it, almost like an egg. Whoa, but it's swimming. It's fast, too. Just came in left. Oh, there we go. Nice. Look at that. I've never seen one of these guys before. See, it has that little extra membrane around it. That's bizarre. It's moving like a flagellate. See that kind of waving motion like a dog wagging its butt or its tail? And it's, uh, it's clearly driven by movement of flagella. Instead of smooth turn on a dime movement that ciliates have. Yeah, it's like the deflector shield in Space War. <laughs> it's pretty funny. 
have to defocus it to see it properly. But there you go, you can see it around it. First, I thought it might be the flagella kind of curved around it, but no, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a ring, clearly like a spherical ring around it. That is so cool. A lot of color too. These guys are very colorful. It's probably the most colorful thing I've seen in a long time. Because you get a little bit of everything. You got some green, some yellow, some orange, and nice red in the center there. Reddish pink. They're pretty thick too. You got to focus through them. See all the vacuoles in there. They got a lot of stuff going on in there. I don't see any pumping, but these guys always have some kind of contractile vacuole to keep the osmosis at bay. But yeah, it's got a lot of vacuoles and little structures in there. Some of the small guys swimming by in the back there. This might have to be an oil lens slide because this is a very nice specimen. Let me back off for a moment. To dab off. I think I got a little extra water on top of the slide, which is not good for the oil lens. back and make sure it didn't destroy everything. Yeah, there are a whole bunch of those guys wiggling around on the slide. Some are quite motile, motile and some are quite still. God, there are tons of them in here. So bizarre. Okay, oil it is. This is a good one. It's another really good slide. slide and it gets down into your other optics <laughs> let me see if it if it's a big problem or not right now now look at that there's different size spheres here seen any movement inside the spheres but they are very colorful see how thick they are I really have to, to focus through them depth of field is so narrow oh there's a swimming one there we go. Wow, look at that guy. It's got some huge vacuoles in there. Looks very transparent, like holes in it almost. Hard to focus on it too, it's so thick. 
beautiful though. It's like those things that you 3D print and you print the voids around and it has hollow structures. This is, a, this is a pretty cool one. I have no idea what species this is or even what what family this is. This is an interesting one. But the fact that it's got all these pigments, uh, chlorophylls, and anthocyanins, and, and uh, other kinds of colors in there, it's definitely some kind of uh, single cell plant. But it's really odd with that extra barrier around it. I've never seen them with a like a capsule like that around them. It's usually eggs that do that, but like a frog egg would have that kind of gelatinous capsule around it. But yeah, it's bizarre. This is very high power. I mean, this is thousand power right now, and this thing is still not massive. It's good. It's good size, but it's not absolutely massive. Right now, Pyramidium would be almost off the screen. Um, so these guys are not huge. But, yeah, really cool. Let's have to get a little more detail here. as I focus through you can see it looks like chains of like it's like rings of material around gaps and some of those individual bits are kind of dancing around in those margins and the camera's not picking that up so much but if you look where those little bridges are the thin bridges there's like individual cells that are kind of dancing around it's the damn camera I can't pick it up unfortunately get a better camera because the detail is amazing Let's see if I can get a proper dark feel for this guy Contrast though. You can see those little bridges are kind of grainy though. There's a lot of individual particles forming those bridges that are kind of dancing around. Really interesting. I guess I can't get the dark field to work on this one. Let me try a different one. Maybe this one will do it. Yeah, got more contrast again. Let's 
See all that texture there when I focus through? It has kind of a grainy quality to it. There's a lot of little details in there. That's wild. That is wild. Let me try a different area. I'll just stay on the oil ends and slow these up around here. See what other goodies I can find. There's a green one up close. There's some details in there, but I'm not seeing any movement. stuff over this way. Some more colorful guys. Ooh, interesting. There is a clear one. There's all kinds of stuff going on in it. That is cool. Let me crank that one up. It needs to be brighter. That one's probably clear because it's already been killed, and those are bacteria dancing around inside of it. So the brownie in motion, the wiggles, that's most likely what's going on there. The pigment's gone because the, they've been invaded by bacteria. So far I've seen that didn't have any pigment that had some activity in it. That is pretty cool. guys in there dancing around makes sense too because these uh, microscopic plants have a cell membrane and a cell wall so the cell wall would actually persist even when the membrane was perforated. Which would allow bacteria to enter and have their way with the contents of the cell. Whereas a, um, as you saw with the, the ciliate and other shows, I have basically lysed from um, slowly dying and then the, Eruption under osmosis, osmotic pressure gets too much. And then the bacteria can swoop in and eat all the goodies that spill out of the cell.
Yep. I got too preoccupied. I missed Paul leaving the stream. Thanks for dropping in, Paul. If you watch the live, if you watch this back, thanks for hanging out. I'm only going to be on for maybe another 40 minutes or so. It's supposed to be a couple hours. I still got to work on some music tonight for hardware jams. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, good. You're still here. Thanks. I meant Paul Artola, Uncle Chrome. So. Thanks, Paul. So that's cool, a little bacteria dancing in there. Let me move around a little bit more before I have to go clean this oil lens. Oh, there's another swimmer. Nice. Get a nice shot of the membrane there. brightness if I can here. Can't quite do a dark field on this dude. Get a little more color though. Let's use a focus here. You get those kind of looks like rings of material. Guy swimming by. Who's this? Who's going by here? Oh, there you go. There's a smaller guy going by. <laughs> Sorry for that spot in the middle. I, I gotta get rid of this. This camera is giving me some artifacts, and that pink spot in the middle is one of them. I can't make it go away, so I'm, I'm working on getting another camera. Yeah, these guys are pretty cool. Let's take another cruise through and see what else is going on. Oh, there's a green one moving. I haven't seen one this green moving around yet. It just has a little bit of orange in it. So there is some variation. Just tweak the light a little bit, get a little more detail. swimming through there in the background. Another another guy with a capsule around him. More uh, this is a nice mixture of orange and green. Yeah, Parlo told his Uncle Chrome. That's his uh YouTube name. At least when he's posting music. When he's on uh, live streams, he usually goes by Paul Artola. Oh, we got something here behind this structure, whatever that is. Oh, it's just a little 
Okay, this guy, you can really see the flagellum there. Let me uh, focus a little better. If you look, as it wiggles, you see that little hair thing. At about, uh, about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, dancing around. It's a little flagellum moving around. Very small, because again, we're at a thousand power, so this dude's pretty tiny. Okay, what else can I find? It's been a pretty good slide. Lots of these interesting plant characters here, single cell plants. Okay, let's try a little bit more searching. Oh, that's interesting. That looks like it's shaped kind of like a diatom. It's got a lot of texture to it, which is unusual. And it has pretty much no color, it's just transparent. Not sure what's going on there. It could be one of the ciliates bumping into that nearby. Trying to focus through and see what is moving that guy. I guess it is that that structure, that long cigar-like structure is still moving itself. It's not something moving around it. Hard to tell sometimes, you have to focus through all this stuff, there's things on top of other things. I've seen guys like this before in the, in the salt marshes when I used to work out there at the, with a the microscope, doing stuff for the public as a naturalist out there. And uh, there was a, some guys that looked like this that were very 3D, almost like a spaceship cigar shaped thing with a lot of complex structure around it. it might be one of these guys I never quite identified what that guy was either because it's such a bizarre shape and, it, and all the look all the lookups I did and people I asked who were also into this stuff didn't quite know what it was pretty interesting though so I think it's more detail out of it. Oh, there you go. Get a little more oblique lighting. That will help. Get a little more detail. It's a very cool shape. Get a dark field on it though. This oblique lighting helps a little bit though. See the kind of 3D structure of it a little bit. It's really hard at a thousand power. I should drop down a bit and get a look at it with a little less power. Let me try that. I'm going to clean this oil mess here. Hopefully it didn't drip down into my other optic. It's a problem with the microscopes. They have a stage that has um, 
gap and if you get something on the edge of the slide then you get uh, an oil can drip down <laughs> into the um, condenser basically so it's more of a, uh, a light condenser than an actual functional optic that you use but it's still something you don't want to get oil on so I'm going to try and clean that real quick while I can so need some gut on there I think that's pretty good I don't think I got anything early on there now the tricky thing is that I move it so much that he can't find that guy again then a lower power Let's see what I can find. Okay. Do I see it? Do I see it? seem to find that little spaceship one. Definitely looks like another diatom in there though. Yeah. Went to clean those optics and I lost where that guy was on here. Amazing colors though, just looking at this thing sweeping through. Let me fix the focus here a little bit more. Just zipping through. Fix my lighting a little bit. Hopefully those colored cameras are as detailed as this magnification as it could be. Hopefully those colors are showing up. Kind of, sort of. it stands out a lot of the field is the same oh that's interesting there's a clear character here dancing around the cells so different than the other ones much more active much more detail and just a simple cell without that extra kind of dome membrane around it a capsule that's pretty cool I'm gonna have to uh, go back to the oil I think just for this guy because that is very nice Let's try that. Let's go back to the oil here. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. We get it centered here in and out of focus you can see the flagella really well you can see the contents inside it's very active uh, in the background see that little filament moving by that's kind of wiggly that is uh, probably a bacterial filament like a uh, could be a blue green algae of some kind so they don't always have a lot of color to them 
but you get these kind of swimming filaments at this scale. This is a good, we're back to a thousand power, so these things are quite small. This guy's real active. Real active. in and out of focus because he's f swimming up and down basically not just side to side and up top to bottom that flagellum move you can see bacteria in the background wiggling around very small particles going by really cool mm -hmm. this flagellum's kind of getting stuck in between some of those cells now you can see it trailing off like a little hair And because it's moving so much, it, it clearly has more than one flagellum. One is pulling it and one is trailing it. So there's at least two. Damn those camera artifacts. Get those color spots. But yeah, you can see that hair dragging behind it. Now it's dragging the other direction as it swims with the. It's like doing a side stroke almost when you swim with one arm, the other one kind of goes off to the side. When it takes a break and the other one takes over. Oh boy, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I went the wrong way and I lost him. There it is. Yeah, that's a good deal to the detail on this guy. Very nice detail. It's fun to watch a different flagella take over. combination of swimming different directions and up and down makes it tr really tricky to follow them to focus it right and really see that long flagellum so it's like three times the length of the body it looks like the little cell body quite long and it's funny how it kind of drags it when it's not using it, it just kind of trails behind like a wet noodle. Ah, it's really moving. Really moving. These controls are pretty fine, but not that fine. It kind of gets hard to track them when they're this small. There's that flagellum trailing behind like a tail. kind of going the other direction leading with the other flagellum and then you can see it kind of if it decides to go the other way it will take a break and the animal will start to take over or they work in tandem sometimes that's pretty cool Yeah, it's, it looks like a lot of work, doesn't it? <laughs> so the com the funny thing is when animals are this small, or plants, 
um, they are swimming through water is like us swimming through oil or worse. It's a lot more friction for them than would be for at our size. So they're always kind of struggling already. And then the fact that it's also on a slide, it might occasionally be going up and down too far and dragging on the edge of the slide, cover slipper on the on the on the slide base. And uh, so yeah. Definitely not the best environment for these guys, so they have a bit of a struggle on the slide. Plus, you got the warmth of the lamp as the lamp is heating up. I don't use LED lamps; I use um, incandescent because the color is better. But one of the drawbacks is um, the heat generated from the incandescent lamp does eventually warm up the cell and even help to dry it out quicker. So that's a drawback, but it does provide. I think superior color that my dissecting scope which I don't have a setup right now also called a stereoscope for, for bigger objects it has an LED lamp because for the model I wanted to get it was the only one they had in stock that had an LED lamp and you can see it's a colder almost bluish more bluish color lamp even though it's white and it has a kind of a different quality of white um, and although that would you know, make the slide dry out less and stuff. Um, it's just the color doesn't look as natural. So if you're doing photography, of course you can color correct and all that stuff. But for live streams, you can't really do a whole lot for that. So, so you have a mix of the two: of the the um, LEDs and the incandescent. And I think on these, it's probably better to have the incandescent for sure because some of these guys, as you saw on this particular slide, quite colorful. And it's nice to get as much of the natural color as you can. Um, just because it's not only more interesting, it's also more educational since it's accurate. So I'm going to use to shoot Kodachrome film, slide film, instead of the Ektachrome or the Fujichrome Velvia. Kodachrome was the most color accurate for, you know, the reds, the greens, the yellows, kind of a balance. Probably more favored the reds and stuff, but you know, Fuji Velvia, people wanted these beautiful green landscapes and tropical rainforest shots that popped green. But it was just kind of a artificial green. It didn't really look, there's without any kind of processing specially, the film was just targeted for that that appeal so it's great for advertising and uh, you know, people want images to pop without having to go into Photoshop and tweak them after you scan the film and I don't like that I want to shoot more accurate natural stuff since I'm out in nature capturing nature um, and Ektachrome was just crap it was just a kind of a um, the quality just wasn't very great but it was cheaper and easier to process and for a while very common so Sometimes I'd have to shoot extra chrome even when I wanted to. But uh, yeah, those are the old days of film. Long gone, for most of us anyway. I know some people that still shoot film. But I don't think it's worth the hassle anymore. I'm not. I love photography, but it's just it's too much hassle and cost. Let's try one more slide from this water, because this water's pretty good. I like this batch. So we get a better dark field action. There we go. Ah, nice. Silly it right off the bat. Beautiful. 
Yeah, this uh, bird bath was a really good idea. That last slide was amazing, and then this one's really cool too. Nice little ciliate. Let me uh, fix the. It's getting too much contrast, here. not enough contrast here. go ah nice dark field there we go that's what I wanted okay Let's see what this guy's up to This one's moving fairly slow. Could we go up one more power and see what we got. Oh, that's nice. This one's got some stuff in the vacuoles. Um, some animals store oil droplets that look like that, have that color to them. This looks just like uh, possibly some food vacuoles because it was eating some of those little guys we already saw. See the colors in there? You have the orange, the red. The yellow, green. So this guy's been meat feasting on those little cells all over. Ah, he's really moving a lot. Come on, man. Let's make it hard on me. Ooh, look at that spiral thing there. That's interesting. Oh, no, it's just out of focus. It's a chain of those red cells. Okay, where did he go? I lost him. Lost him. There he is. Get over here. Yeah, so he's feasted on the small cells. They're inside the little vacuoles. You can see it's got the little, um, this might be one of those little kind of, they're called, uh, one of those called stylonchia. It's usually a little thinner. This one's kind of fat, but it has the very active bristly parts at the top and the bottom. If you watch what it leads with, that's kind of, for lack of a better term, the head region, because that's where it's using to go forward. It has more cilia, um, but occasionally leads with the other end as well. And they're very thick bristly cilia called ciri. They kind of fuse together. Typical cilia make these really thicker groups of cilia called Siri, C-I-R-R-I, -R -R -I. and they usually have them at the top and bottom, not all over the place, it's very distinct, and it's pretty cool because you can really see what it's been feasting on, God, it's in and out of focus here, come on dude, ah, he's this one's a chore because he's up and down and in and out. The depth of field on the camera is a little less forgiving than the actual eyepieces are. Come on, where'd you go? There we go. This is the kind of guy that would benefit from methyl cellulose in the matrix to slow him down a little bit. But you see the colorful spots there. Those are the little critters we saw on the previous slide that have been eaten by this guy. He's got them in there digesting in little vacuoles. this a little bit Let it pop a little bit better let's do some uh, oblique lighting it shows it a little more detail there we go now you can really see the outline of the cell you can see the little guys inside you can see the little Siri pumping away in the front and some of the tail end they don't really have a head and a tail but 
kind of acts like it because it keeps leading with that one side of the cell a lot. It's like a dominant, a leading dominant region. Oh boy, there we go. It's in there looking for more yum yums. slow down I'd go really close because this has a lot of detail in it this is a really nice cell but it's chore enough just following it around like a really continuously moving video game on these dials is a little tricky to free flow ah overcorrecting too much yeah still out sweeping looking for goodies it's got several meals in there already ah. let me fix this a little bit Also, if I bigger feel the view, but at this magnification, I don't have a lot of choice. So far, that's the only silly that I've found, which is unusual. Usually, find one like this, you find a, at least a couple of them, and now I lost them. Let me go back out, do a quick search. moving quite a bit so you could have done anywhere on the slide well, looks like a uh, little thread of um, that might be blue green algae right there a little thread let me see yep definitely a uh, a colonial thread of something. Oh, there's one of those little spherical guys right next to it. That'd be a nice shot. Let me zoom in on that. There's one of those little swimming guys with a little structure around it. And there's a little filamentous algae right next to it. Oh, look at that. That little guy comes in. Ooh. There's some fast ones in the background a little bit. <laughs> Let's see if I can fix that. There you go. It's a little more contrast. Pop the details. You can see the... Cells right up to the edge of that. You can see the barrier if I focus through there. A little surrounding structure touching it. And the filamentous algae do have uh, flagella as well. So if you've seen some motion there, um, it could be a couple things bumping into them, but they also can move and kind of flex form these different shapes not quite sure what's going on there could be because of the the water balance is changing in the slide as it dehydrates you get those kind of jerks sometimes in the water
quick adjustment to that. Uh, that's interesting. Hmm. A little Black Lodge mixer change sides. Let me verify a little. Let's move a couple modifications to it. See what sounds different. Try one more time to find that guy who was swimming around so fast. Where did it go? Some of those little colorful cells. Well, I know I'm going to get some more samples eventually. That bird bath is great. Slide's starting to dry up. Let's see if we can find that guy before it's too late. It's look like space photography there. I think the guy was down here, but you can see this slide is already starting to dry up. He may have been trapped already. into one of these little pockets. Let's check out one of these pockets. Those little islands of water when they dry up. moving. Uh, there's one of those things I was looking at before. Kind of spaceship looking thing. It's an interesting structure to it. Cells trapped in here. Nowhere to go. Not the one that was swimming. There's one of those cells with the membrane around it.
There's none in that little cluster. There's a tight squeeze in that one. Yeah, I don't know where it went. It went off screen before and then just got gobbled up in one of these other clusters. Yeah, there's a little, little tiny colonial algae there, a little filament, four cells long. <laughs> yeah, I just totally lost that other guy. Too bad he had some nice stuff it was eating. I wanted to get a close up view of it. character went it's the only one on the entire slide oh this is really cool this one has all kinds of bacteria inside of it this slides a this cell is a bacterial party right now there's only oil left on this slide we'll see It's a bacteria party. Hey. So that's bacteria to a thousand power. Don't know if I got enough oil on the slide. It looks a little off. But you can see quite a bit of stuff in there. All different sizes different species of bacteria doing the wiggly dance from brownie in motion crazy wiggle wiggle dance That's a pretty good second slide from that guy. That's a good. I like that uh, bird bath. Do one. Well, let's see. Let's look at the chocolate real quick. Chocolate powder. I'm gonna see what the little bits look like on here for the dark versus the milk. Try to get a couple flakes of 
dark on this side. Take some flakes of the milk chocolate. And because it's fat based, cocoa butter and all that good stuff, I can't put, I can't immerse these in water. It's a hydrophobic, it's not going to mix. So. Let's just try them this way. And some of these might be too opaque for the scope. Might be better on a dissecting scope, but this is the only scope I have set up this moment. Let's just see what we can see. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, there we go. There's a transparent section there. So this is the dark chocolate. And this is the uh, let me go to another section of it here. thin. They're pretty good scrapings, but they're still pretty thick. We go to that's fairly thin. So the, it's pretty obviously not as dark as it looks like to the naked eye, but it's quite a bit more um, reddish brown content and you can see the kind of fatty matrix there grainy bits let's see if I can change the light on it a little bit there you go get some color there so that's the dark chocolate Now let's cruise over to the milk chocolate. Which is, I think, a little bit finer scrapings. Definitely uh, a lighter tan color. Still some little red bits in there. But definitely much lighter color. But it's funny how your eye fills in the. Um, this is transmitted light because it's going through the material. But when you bounce off of it, Definitely has the um, a lighter color to it. Kind of, if you look at um, on a much more coarse level, you look at like denim blue jeans under a microscope, just a really low power microscope, and what looks like blue is actually very, very, very little blue at all, mostly white, and your eye just fills in all that extra detail, gives you the solid color of um, blue, whereas this is giving you the solid color of like a light brown when it's mostly barely tan or white matrix. And then you go over here and you get the, yeah, let's find a thinner part. 
Over here you get the much darker color. Eh, that's not a good example. There's that one I just had. This one has a lot more of the brown flecks in it with some red and the overall color of the kind of fatty matrix is more of a tan color than the milk chocolate and your brain just fills in those little extra details cool uh, the red bits are the um, like you look at cocoa powder it looks like kind of red dirt um, cocoa powder is pretty red and I've actually I collected uh, when I went to Costa Rica I found a um, chocolate tree that had dropped a couple pods chocolate trees are funny because they don't they kind of fruit off the trunk. They don't really fruit off the long branches. At least, not the pods that I saw. They, has, I guess, maybe there's some variability. Um, and one of them had kind of fallen off the trunk and rotted open a little bit, so you could see the individual cacao seeds, basically. Which, you know, you can kind of crack open and get the nibs out of there. And uh, it is a rusty, reddish color in general um, but they're probably different varieties and also when they when they process it it can get darker I believe to get these different colors it's just funny though because at this level it looks quite reddish brown to my naked eye on the slide uh, darker color and then you put it in the scope and it gets much much lighter you're seeing the individual pieces instead of stuff smashed together. So that's kind of fun just to show the color variation. I think I'll do one more quick slide of that really cool bird bath because I'm so far blown away with those samples. Quite amazing. some fast swimmers let's go to dark field hey nice look at that guy another one of those from before this one's even faster holy smokes look at him go let me fix this uh, camera's not getting the color right Guy. This one has all the cool colors. Yeah, 
Where'd it go? I'm gonna have to search the whole slide to find that guy. swimming around. A whole bunch of them at the top here. Yeah. Oh, that's a different one. That's one of those little thin ones. But a good specimen. Let's go in closer. This is more like I was thinking the one they call the Stylonky. It's longer, thinner, has the bristles at the top and bottom, the fused uh, cilia called Siri. Boy, oh boy, there's a lot of action on the slide. Look at all that movement. Let me fix this a little bit. It's a little too bright. That's better. Much better. This is another one of those guys that swims up and down, so it makes it very tricky to keep it in focus. But it is fun to watch it swim, it's very dramatic. But that other one I was trying to follow earlier is bigger, and he's seen a lot of these colorful, yummy guys everywhere. This guy doesn't look like he has any colorful things inside of it because he's too small, I think. Okay, he's on a pattern at least, so I don't have to keep following him. So these guys swimming by. These guys are fun. Can't make out those little kind of spherical barriers around them at this level. You have to use a different lighting technique because that is pretty thin barrier. If I go back to um, We'll go back to a different lighting scheme here you can see that structure around them a little easier just barely around them there you go there's a good angle on that one at the bottom very thin transparent shell around it. And the flagella are emanating toward the top. Seems to do some kind of a twirling thing that pulls them toward the direction of the flagella. Another one out of focus a little bit, you can see that barrier. Yeah, these guys look like the little UFOs for sure. <laughs> they're damn hard to follow sometimes too. I like these little guys are pretty still, so they're more um relaxing, easier to follow. I'm going to try and find that other guy that would that. There it is. Ooh, just when I was talking about it, came in the frame. Yay, look at that. Nice mixture of, it's kind of on the edge of oblique lighting in a dark field. You can get some detail, but also has some back, some dark background. Where 
Where'd you go? Where did you go? There you are. So it's got that little kind of bristly structure in the front onto the Siri. Just like a giant mustache almost. There's another small dude of some kind. I think I saw that one earlier. So clear flagellate. focusing through these guys they're all different layers little guys in the back little guy to the side nice little colorful cluster there big guy or the skinny guy there's a guy trapped on the edge <laughs> of the cover slip him in a different uh, where the, the backlighting makes the cover slip darker but outside the cover slip is light look at the nice transition zone there characters in here. It's another filamentous algae. Top there. More algae. Tons of these little swimmers with the little protective domes around them. see the flagellum there in the dark field sweeping in front of that guy up the upper left it's just poking around all right I gotta find those other guys where did they go where did they go zoo where I used to work so my earlier slides the pre-recorded pre footage I put on the channel had some of the most amazing stuff I got the paramecium I got the amoeba the um, gastrotrix and a bunch of other really cool critters in that water at the zoo I'm gonna go back there and get some of those oh there's a nice green guy swimming around all crazy go little green guys Yeah. 
This is the busiest slide I think I've ever made this year. So much stuff at once on here. All different colors, focusing distances. It's totally nuts. Look at all that. All in one little spot. Big guys, small guys. All different depths. Sometimes you just get lucky. Get a nice sample. Just kick back and so the backlight flagellates are pretty cool there. You can really see the flagella sweeping around. somewhere between oblique and dark field. So you get the colors, you get the 3D. Okay, I love the fast guys. I need the big fast guys. Ah, there it is again. Hey, there's a little cigar. Cigar with a mustache. You know, they're much more flexible than paramecium when they kind of, they flex, but these guys seem to be a little more gelatinous than paramecium when they kind of bump into stuff, they really flex. Almost fold in half at some point. on these little patterns where they kind of go in like a it's like a star pattern this goes up diagonal up straight up diagonal the other direction down diagonal this makes it fun I could just kind of leave it here and you can watch them do their little patterns until it goes over there over there so you can really kind of twist and flex Quite a flexible cell. Then he decides to go up a little bit and do his pattern all over again. It's weird too because it, it's doing a quick retreat like it's bumping into something. It's more like a search pattern than actually bumping into stuff.
this up a little bit, change the sound a little bit. Staying in one place now. Just have to worry about focus. I was gonna make this a short stream, but I'm finding so much cool shit. I'll keep going. He's pretty good. I like this guy. All right, I'm going to try looking for another big guy. One that keeps eating all this stuff. And the slide is drying up. There's some cool textures there. Air bubble textures. slide cover slip let's go zipping through so I can find another big character cover slip all together too. Occasionally I put more than a drop of water in here by accident. And you have these kind of oh there it is. Yeah got it. Gotcha 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 Tricky part is keeping the focus. Come on, dude, where'd you go? There we go. Now it's video game time. Hope I can keep this in focus. It's actually easier to trace them using the eyepieces instead of the screen, so I'm trying to do my best to center them. I hope it stays in focus. Okay, now he's on a pattern. So I can leave him there for a second. Maybe. Good. Stay on a pattern. There we go. He's doing a similar pattern. Zigzag. Up and down. Big circles. So 
doing the big circle thing now. It's going around, around, around. And occasionally dipping through, doing a couple zigzags. Much more difficult to follow this guy. Just get him to stop for a moment. You can really appreciate the details. You can also see this one has a gullet um, where that kind of mustache bristly thing is sweeping. It actually curves down into the top of the cell where there's like a groove like the paramecium have called like a gullet or like a little um, like a vestibule kind of thing and that's where they um, it's the really really basic version of a kind of oral cavity thing but it's really still outside the cell and then they have structures inside where they can form the vesicles for food vacuoles and uh, which is clever so you can actually have an area just for feeding and not have to worry about creating food vacuoles anywhere on the cell it's just like the beginning of specialization before you started getting multicellular life whereas like the rotifers you know thousands of cells about a thousand cells and they have a clearly defined kind of head region with the mouth parts rotating uh, on the outside of the structure and then you have this kind of uh, pharynx structure inside that kind of pumps and creates suction and it brings the stuff into this mastex and kind of, kind of chews it up a little bit like little jaws not exactly sure how hard that structure is, but it looks like a mouth that's doing crushing bit ability. Could just be just a pumping function. I have to read more about that. But it is a nice slow shot there. Keep doing that. Now I can focus on you and get clear beauty shots. Uh, this guy's got a lot of detail. A lot of detail. This oblique lighting is great because it really pops the 3D. The dark field is cool, but it just doesn't look as good as oblique lighting. And then maybe the next show I'll do face contrast. I have to add different optics for that. But you can really see some cool details on the. Uh, all the living creatures with phase contrast. starting to dry up is a nice shot for scale those colored spheres see how much bigger it is than those guys so if I went to a thousand power it'd basically be like a piece of this guy on the screen it'd be so big and it'd be impossible to follow it It's one advantage to AI. Oh, there's a contractual vacuole that going right there. Look at that. Right in the middle of the cell. Boom. And bam. There it goes again. Oh, the one at the top, too, where the, where the mouth structure is. I think I'm seeing one up there, too. That could be just vesicles forming as it's getting some food. You can see all the little particles around it getting shoot, shoot around and also kind of sucked toward it by the cilia. A 
very nice and clear there. Look at that. Thank you for slowing down. Beautiful. You can see using some of those guys. Nice colors inside. Got the yellow, got the red, a little orange. Don't see any green ones, but. Definitely had a feast. Yeah, this is the this is all worth it. This kind of shot can take hours to get to this point if you're lucky. And then you just kick back and enjoy the show. Because now he's moving around less. He's staying in focus just beautiful to watch it adjustment here just because see how thick they are too I can focus and you can see more cilia and more cilia and more cilia all around the cell Dueling vacuoles, that was cool. Right next to each other. And boom, boom. So you can see the curvature of that structure at the top of the cell. As it kind of goes around the top and curves down in to form that kind of a gullet. Which is facing away from us now. Before it was kind of rolled and you could actually see the gullet really well as it was swimming but the fact that it's slowing down there's come a couple of things I mean this slide is definitely warming up it's getting drier because you saw the the um, evaporation lines as this, the water is coming drying toward the center but this guy might start be slowing down because he's uh, getting ready to do you know what <laughs> so I don't really want to make him do that but usually when they start slowing down a lot like this there's an indication that something's going on he's definitely less active even though he's still in place feeding it's not moving too much stuff swimming around it the cilia create quite a suction stuff from all directions will get pulled in and bounce off in different directions like that <laughs> it's gotta be pretty wild if you're one of those little critters getting bounced around like that it's like
So I don't think this guy is doing badly. Still moving around quite a bit. It's flexing the cell. Seems to be still trying to get some food. Stuff inside the cell is all going business as usual. I don't think he's gonna expire like those other ones have done recently. But then again, the slide is getting dry, so I might have to stop it. Plus, I gotta stop pretty soon. I gotta work on a music project for tonight, which I should have started way earlier. So I'll probably pull a half nighter at least, not an all, at least not an all nighter. Yeah, see, he's got something going on at the end there. I think he ruptured at the bottom side, and he's already starting to spill out some contents. See how that stain put? Like he's stuck on something. I think he already started to rupture down there. And the cell's holding together. I think he already started to rupture. Looks like it's trying to pull away, but it's stuck. It's really weird. Really, really weird. He's trying to pull down, he's trying to pull out. Now the cell's starting to have a weird shape a little bit. Man, yeah, it's like it's stuck. was just adhered to something somehow. Yeah, it just pulled away. That's bizarre. I've never seen that happen. I don't think that's a... You can get that with predators that will grab onto you, but I don't know what the hell that was. It got stuck on that stuff on the... to the left. Bizarre. Didn't break though, still moving. Sometimes you get them starting to break apart when they're still swimming, which is really weird. Yeah, a bunch of Christmas balls. I wonder if it if it cares uh, if the red ones are uh, more attractive chemically than the yellow ones or the green ones. They aren't really, at this level, not really tasting, although tasting is just chemistry, so not exactly sure. Yeah, so he's still got some stuff hanging off of him there. I guess that was hanging on. He didn't drop that. So I guess he's still in good shape. slowed down at least. It was so fast earlier. It's hard to keep track of it. Now you can see the gullet heading down now. As it rotates a little bit you can see the gullet.
starting to speed up now. This rate, the guy's doing pretty well. He's going for hours, but I don't think the slide has more than maybe 20 minutes left. And unfortunately, I got to get going on this other stuff. Otherwise, I would continue to watch this. It's pretty fascinating. So thanks again, Paul, for hanging out all this time. Must be some good raw material for a future video I can chop up with. Uh, my best of Ciliates video. So to anyone else who watches the replay, thanks for checking it out. I'll have another one soon as I get some more good samples. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments. Or even requests, you know, certain things I could probably try and look for. I also do the kitchen chemistry stuff where I pull weird stuff out of the fridge that uh, has fungus or bacteria or just various food items to look at under the scope, which is always fun. But tonight was some nice water samples, so that's where we went tonight. So. From all the micro critters and myself, thank you again for watching and stay curious and keep looking around. There's all kinds of fun things to look at out there. I uh, will catch you later. Thank you very much. Good night.